Let's brief on AWS code commit and then we will see a demo on how to use code commit. AWS code commit is a secure, highly scalable managed source control service that hosts private Git repositories. Well, code commit scales automatically as your source code size increases, so you don't have to worry about scalability. It supports the standard functionality of Git. So if you're familiar with Git, you can get started with code commit right away without much of learning curve. Well, if you have never worked on Git, I recommend you start learning Git. It is a very popular source control system these days. You have a lot of very detailed documentation available on the internet. And then with code commit, there is no need to manage private source control systems and maintain its infrastructure. Meaning you don't have to manage any infrastructure yourself for source control systems such as private Git or SVN on your data center. Also AWS code commit encrypts data in transit and at rest. So it is very secure. Typically Git repositories are controlled by Git credentials. And with code commit, you can control access to the repositories using Git credentials for AWS code commit for IAM user. So for accessing code commit repositories, you can create an IAM user. And once you create under security credentials section of the IAM user, you will get an option to create Git credentials, which are not same as the console username and password. You can also use SSH keys for AWS code commit for IAM user. With SSH connections, you can create public and private key files in various ways on your local machine that Git and code commit use for SSH authentication. You associate the public key with your IAM user and store the private key on your local machine. So when you would like to make a connection to code commit repository, you use the public key and private key authentication. And apart from these two, you can also use AWS CLI credentials helper. You can allow Git to use a cryptographically signed version of your IAM user credentials or Amazon EC2 instance role whenever Git needs to authenticate with AWS to interact with code commit repositories. This will be helpful if you do not wish to create an IAM user for each of the developers to use the code commit repositories. You can use IAM roles to generate temporary credentials and use credential helper to provide access to code commit Git repositories. However, unless your organizations require you to use temporary credentials, AWS recommends to use IAM users to provide access to code commit repositories. Then you can easily migrate Git repositories to AWS code commit. And you can also trigger SNS notifications or Lambda functions in response to changes in the events on the repository, such as new changes pushed to a branch or a new branch created or a branch deleted, etc. All right, let's take a look at AWS code commit on the console. It is fairly straightforward. On the console, you can either search for developer tools and you can see all the AWS services that we discussed in our overview lecture, or you can simply search with the service name code commit. Let's click on it. This is a consolidated console for all the developer tools. It would be easy to manage continuous deployment from this console. And from here, you can see all the services that support CI CD. For this session, though, let's stick on to code commit. We will visit rest of the services in coming lectures. Let's click on repositories in here. This lists all the code commit repositories under your account. Access to the repositories can be controlled using IAM policies. So although you see all the repo names in here, you can restrict access for specific repositories to specific users using IAM policies and apply those policies on the users. All right, let's create a new repository and let's give it a name and let's create the repo. You will get the connection information in here. You can either connect using HTTPS or SSH. With SSH, you need to use the public key private key combination. You need to upload your public key to the IAM user. And once done, you will get an SSH key ID. You can follow these instructions to make SSH connection. But for the demo, let's use HTTPS. But we don't have the credentials yet. As discussed before, what is the AWS recommended approach for credentials? Yes, that's IAM user. 
let's go to IAM. I already have this user created and assigned this managed policy with full code commit access. However, if you like this user to be restricted with specific repository, under resources, you can list the repo complete ARN, which you will find under repository settings. And if you go to the security credentials, you will see two options related to code commit apart from the console and API access. This one in here, SSH keys, is for code commit SSH connection as discussed before. And this one in here is what we are going to use. So let's click on generate. You will get a username and password specific to code commit get and are different from console username and password. You cannot use these for console access. And similarly, you cannot use console username and password for directly accessing code commit git. I will download these credentials. All right, we have created a repo and an IAM user to access the repo. Now let's look at a simple example of code check-in to code commit. I have these two simple Python files. Let's commit these to code commit. I install git bash. Remember, code commit supports all git functionality. So we can use all typical git commands in here. So let's open git bash from here. Let's initialize a git repo from this folder using git init. And let's add all the files using git add and then dot. And let's do git status. And you can see both the files are staged and ready to be committed. And then let's commit and add a message. Now let's grab the code commit repo URL. Now let's add a git remote origin to our code commit repository. And now let's push our changes to above origin and to master branch using git push origin master. And here is where we need to provide the username and password we generated moments before. So let's provide them. All right, the commit has been pushed. Let's check the status using git status. And there is nothing to commit. And let's go back to code commit console and hit refresh. And there it is. Our code has been checked into code commit. If you go to commits in here, you can list all the commits for the given branch, which you can choose from here. And if you click on any of the commit, we can see all the changes made in this commit, just like what you have in GitHub, Bitbucket, or any other Git-based hosting services. And from here, you can create new branches for the repository. Let's create a new branch. Let's give it a name and branch from any existing branches and hit create branch. And you can start using this branch to push your code instead of pushing it to master directly. You can also list tags in here if your commit has any tags. And under settings, you will find repository ID and repository ARN. ARN is what you use in IAM policy to provide repository specific access. And you can set a default branch from here. So when you clone or add this repository, if you don't specify branch option in the command, this branch you set as default will be used. And you can set notifications from here for different events such as pull request event updates, pull request comment events, and commit comment events. This is solely for notifying the SNS subscribed users. And we also have triggers in here. So let's create a trigger. Let's give it a name. And you can choose any of these options for the events to be triggered. Let's choose push to existing branch. And you can also choose which branch specifically you would want to enable this trigger. I will leave it as blank so it applies to all the branches. And from here, you can either choose an SNS topic from which you have multiple subscriber options such as email, HTTP, SQS, etc. Or 
you can trigger a Lambda function from which you can perform some custom processing. Let's say log an event to S3 file or CloudWatch log stream or store event information into DynamoDB table for future references. Well, you might be wondering, we just saw notification option. How is this different from notifications? Well, number one, we don't have an option for lambdas on the notification. It is solely for sending an email message to the subscribers. And number two, the events for notification and trigger are different. So remember for notifications, events are pull request event updates and pull request comment events and commit comment events. And for triggers, events are push to existing branch, create branch or tag, delete branch or tag. All right, let's choose an SNS topic for which I subscribed and let's create trigger. Now let's quickly push a change to our master branch. Let's do some changes to this test1.py file. Let's add this file to stage, git add and then dot. And then let's commit with a message. And let's push the commit to master branch using git push origin master. All right, I should have received an email from the trigger which we just created. And here is the email which will show what repository was changed and who changed it. That is it for this lecture. It was pretty straightforward, isn't it? If you're familiar with Git, it's a cakewalk to get started and use code commit. For those who are not familiar with Git, well, only suggestion, start learning Git. Thanks for watching.